Hey, so this is future Deuteragonist. The footage you're about to see is from, I think, a week ago. And the reason why I'm coming from the future is to tell you that the subscriber count that I'm about to say, that's no longer accurate. Not only have we hit 600 subscribers, we've surpassed 600 subscribers, which is completely awesome. I just wanted to say thank you. I've got tons of video ideas still that I want to keep on doing, hopefully every week. But as you guys know, school can get in the way of things and I have to get my priorities straight. But that aside, it is a milestone nonetheless, and I am very, very thankful for all of you guys who have come in, all of you guys who have been around for years or maybe even a few months. Anyone at all who's subscribed, thank you. Yeah, so for the rest of the video, I'm going to have the past Deuteragonist do the rest of it, so I will see you guys in another video. Hi, I'm the Deuteragonist. This channel has 594 subscribers, and this is how I wrote All on the Line. The song was a complete accident, and it's one of the only songs that had chords long before it had words. I had my guitar, and I was playing old chord formations, and I accidentally played a chord on the third fret instead of the second fret, and so I was playing it in the wrong place. But I thought to myself, wait a second, that actually doesn't sound that bad. The whole song was based around putting chords in the wrong places and seeing what sounded good and what didn't, and it just kind of became a song. Would you mind at all? All that you've done for me. Oh, I would risk it all if that would set you free. The pre chorus was such a breakthrough. It was a minor sounding chord that transferred into this major sounding chorus. The hardest part was actually just trying to fill in the gap between the minor and major portions of the song. The hook for the chorus is just such a joy to play, going from one fret to another and going in a sort of minor verse from a major chorus is just so cool, I had never written anything like it. But when I wrote the chords out, I actually thought to myself that this shouldn't be allowed to exist. Parts of the song don't sound correct, it's not cookie cutter, but that's what makes it so good. It just breaks all of the rules that I have in some of my older music, and it just worked out, and it was the best feeling to have that happen, to truly create something that had never existed before. But sometimes I have to take a fall Even when I say the line, what can you see, where have I gone, it goes from a very minor sounding chord to a very major sounding verse, and I had to find a note that sounded the same and sounded like it would fit in both pieces without changing anything. Someday I'll have to save it all, but this is where I can take a fall, but someday I have to risk it. The lyrics just weren't important when I wrote the song. I had a tune that I would sing in the back of my mind when I would play, but I didn't have any words because I thought the song just sounded perfect as an instrumental. Adding words to it actually gave the song another thing that shouldn't exist, making it more imperfect and out of the box. I remember writing the lead up to the chorus as sometimes you have to take the fall which later became Sometimes I Have to Take a Fall. I wanted to put as much of the lyrics onto myself directly and have all the questions asked to someone else more indirectly. I don't consider myself a great musician, so my songs are pretty rough acoustic, but this song just embodies Rough Cut Reject in a way that I can't explain. It has all the components to be a bad song, but instead it just flourishes 
And I think we as people are exactly the same way, and that's what I want the album to be about at the end of the day, to defy expectations and just keep going. Mm.